All right. I like looking fine. Have you ever had a mustache before? Are you kidding me? Is that a yes? Is that a yes or no? Okay, last night I was looking at pictures of my dad's fly level. Oh, no, I'm excited. Okay, so it's like a mold of better looking. Yeah. <laughs> My mom finds them attractive and not molds. <laughs> That's the difference. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, this summer, I was at school this summer, and I saw a kid with a children Okay, here we go. Here we go. So funny. Take a look, please. That wasted some time getting goiners. We gotta, we gotta jump to it. That one is simple. It's not the one we want. I want seven. Eight. 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 Okay, write an equation yeah, for the line. Oh, I got that one. No, eight and nine. Shh. We'll, we'll look at something else too. Write an, find an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the given point. So we got to do a couple things, right? You talk me through. If you want to find the equation of a tangent line, line tangent to this curve, what do we need to come up with the equation of a tangent line? What are our algebra one requirements to come up with the equation of a line? Slope and y-intercept. Slope. Mx plus b. Y-intercept. Okay, well, I mean, it'd be nice if we had a y-intercept, but they're probably not going to give us a y-intercept directly. But if I had a slope and a point, point that'd be fine, right? Point, slope, point. So, right. So, let's let's try this. Thanks, Ethan. Yep. Shut up, Ethan. Wow. Good. All I said was thanks. Okay, so we need a slope and a point. What's what's our point going to be? What's the point of tangency, in fact? There's only one point we can get. X is one. But what's Y? How'd you get that? You just do it. Two over four. Two over four. So when X equals one. <laughs> what? Let's go to Just reason. Okay, so we get one half. So we've got the point one one half. What about slope? Can you find the derivative? Find the derivative. Okay, so there's the calculus part, the derivative. So we're going to, to find the derivative, though, what do we want to do to this first? Okay, yeah, it's... Okay, good. We, we, need, we don't have... Today, we're going to learn some tricks. We're going to learn some bigger tricks. We're going to learn how to deal with, with quotients of functions and products of functions using the product rule and the quotient rule. Okay, but we don't have that yet. And furthermore, we probably don't even... Those are harder to use. The quotient rule, they're not hard, but the quotient rule is a little bit cumbersome. It's you're gonna when you see you'll know what I mean. We would like to avoid it when possible. We always want to make things as easy as possible, and it's easier here to divide, split this into two fractions, and divide both, you know, divide both through by x to get a single power of x in the numerator. Might be negative power of x. Right? That's much easier to do than use the quotient rule. So if we rewrite this, y is, what's the first term going to be? 2x squared or 3x squared? Well, I, I, I don't want to know what the derivative is. I just want to know if I, if I rewrite the function pre-derivative, right? So what's that going to give you? x squared over 4, right? Is the first term? Okay. Or one fourth x squared, whatever you want to call it. I think it's easier to write it as one fraction. One, two, one. Plus one over four x. If I want to write that as a power, if we want to use the power rule, it has to be. Yeah, we got to write it as x to a power, not x on the bottom, x on the top. So we'll write it as x to the minus one over four, right? Yeah. Why did you put x squared? Uh, because x cubed over x is x squared. Isn't that just x? Mm, what? 
I'm not. Say, say, ask the question again, Matt. I'm not following. Isn't it just X since you have common denominators? Or X over 4? Yeah, what we did, maybe I should show the intermediate step. What we did to no, get here. <coughs> no, he's saying that when you combine those yeah, two, it's not X over 4. True. Uh, yeah. Would you mind um, doing the steps in between? Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's yeah, let's do that. Let's go back. So what if, what if we rewrite this as x cubed over 4x plus 1 over 4x? We're going to split it, right? And now we've got to rewrite these. These are not derivative-friendly forms. In order for us to use the only derivative we know, non-trig derivative, we have to be able to write those as powers of x, not x is on the bottom. It's not quotients and things, right? So this first one is going to become... You know, the 4 stays on the bottom, but x cubed divided by x is x squared, right? Second one, the 4 stays on the bottom, but 1 divided by x is x to the minus 1. I could pull the 1 fourths out front if I want to. That's fine. Okay. So now we're ready to differentiate. So now if we differentiate... Y prime equals what? What are we going to get from this first term if we differentiate? Four and a half x. Exactly. I bring the two down front. So two over four is one over two. And then x to the what power? One. So just x over two? Yeah. Right? What about this one over here? Minus one fourth x to the negative Two. two. Negative one minus one is negative two, right? So we'll bring the minus one out front. That gives us a minus one fourth. X to the minus two, right? And if there's anything we want to do to that, we, we probably want to rewrite that using a positive exponent, if anything, right? So X over two minus one over four X squared. If I just pop that X down at the bottom. What? Yeah. Oh, pause for yeah. a second. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Right. So that's the derivative. There is no reason for us to simplify that anymore because all we're going to do is evaluate it. Right. So why go through the problem, you know, the hassle of simplifying this thing to write it in a nicer form? We're just going to plug in a one anyway. Yes. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. I figured it out. Okay. So at x equals 1, y prime would just equal, what, 1 half minus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth. So that's the slope of the tangent line. Right? Plug that into the point slope. Yeah, and now we got it. We got a slope. We got a point. We're set. Right? So if we plug those into point slope, we just get y minus one half was our y value equals one fourth times the quantity x minus one. <coughs> right? So, what do we do? Distribute. Distribute. And. Yeah. So what do we do? Add a half. Add a half to negative one fourth, which gives us what? Yeah. One fourth x plus one fourth. Do that one. Okay. Let's plug it in and see what it does. Okay. Shall we jinx it? So, x over 4, it should be, I hope I work until we do that, should. <coughs> x over 4 plus 1 fourth. Okay, so then these other ones, I would probably leave for you. Yeah, that's you can do that. That's simple. That's a joke. Okay. Oh, you know what? That one you kind of can't do. 
I didn't mean to sign that one. Oh, I did that one. I completely understood it, too. <clears throat> that one, you, we, well, you'll know how to do it after today, but I really didn't mean to sign that one, so. <coughs> so we'll you still know how to do it. We're until <coughs> after today. Yeah. What is it, too? All right, so what I want to do now, I want to look at, okay, let's look at some tricks. No, 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 no. Tricks. I'm going to give you guys some tricks going into the break. All the tricks we're going to need. Okay. So just let us go. In, in this one case, I actually am, I'm not going to prove these today. I'm just going to give you the tricks and we'll practice them. And then I'll show you, you know, one other, some other day when we get back, we'll talk about how we could approve these. Because they're, they're cool proofs. They're proofs that you need to see. Proofs, wait, proofs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. Sure. Okay, the product roll. Basically, the most important thing is not shut up. Wait, what's the longest proof you've ever written? I don't think I've ever proved so much. I don't remember. I can't remember. They're the longest one? It's just how many pages? I don't know. I mean, more than 20? Oh, yeah. I actually really like proofs a lot. And I admire mathematicians. Okay, the product rule. Here's the product rule. If we've got a, uh, the derivative of a product of functions, the derivative of the product of f of x and g of x, let's say. Here's how you do the, you, you do the <coughs> calculus. This is just equal to, and in no particular order, it doesn't matter for the product rule. You do the first times the derivative of the second. Oh, I saw this yesterday. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, because yeah. this is on that last one. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was doing with the whole problem. Yeah. And then you were like, why are you doing that work? Like so. Yeah, yeah, that's where I saw it when you did it. Okay. Now, now, an easy way to show this, I want to show you a little shorthand for this that we'll come back to later. This is this really helps, I think. When you can write these things, that looks cumbersome, to write this in terms of of all these, you know, dx's, and you write it with these this, these forms, functional form with the, the, the quotient form of the derivative, the derivative of all that stuff with respect to x. Now watch this, we can do this easier. If we let, we're going to make a couple little substitutions here. If we let u equal f of x, so we're going to represent the function f of x as a single variable u, okay? If we let v equal g of x, then look what we can do. We could say the derivative with respect to x of u times v just equals u v prime plus, I like to write it the other way, plus v u prime. Like Same thing, but isn't that a nice, more, that's a much more compact way to do it. Yeah. There's another way you could show that, and I want you to just, yeah, it's much easier to write, it's easier to keep track of, and you're going to really like it when, when we do the quotient rule. Using this format for the quotient rule is way better, way easier to remember. Uh, one other, I, you know, one other way you could show this that's kind of cool if we say, uh, I don't think I have the colors in there. These assignments are going to be due. Y'all yeah, let's work on over the break. No. No. How about that? How about in the break? Well, hey, I'll give you a chance to get some questions in. How about that? See, if, if we just prime that whole quantity, you see how that means the same thing? Are we going to have double primes? Yeah, that are oh, yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. We're going to have double primes and triple primes and all kinds of stuff. So, what'd you say the, the triple prime means? Triple integral. I mean, a triple derivative. derivative. Third derivative. I don't understand right. that, but what is that like? Uh, derivative is the slope. Derivative of the derivative is the. It's the slope of the slope. Is the and the derivative of the third derivative would just be the slope of the slope of the slope. What would that be? Is there a value for the slope of the slope, though? Like, is that a thing? 
Is no, it is. It is a thing. The thing is, it means different things in different contexts. No, if if the original slope, function slope. is position, the slope of the slope of position as a function of time is acceleration. Okay, well, what, oh, is what is the slope of that? Slope yeah, it's the same thing. Not jerk. in physics. A, what? a jerk. Oh, what is that? I just meant it's a slope. jerk is kind of non physical. We don't, we don't need to talk about it. They're weird. That's just, it's a, Isn't this just the slope of the slope just the same thing as acceleration? Are they just the same thing? If you're given no. Well, it's. We'll, we'll get to that. I'm not going to do that today. Yeah, that it's, sense, we'll get to that. The slope of this line should be that. Okay, so, that's that's slope. Yeah. so try one of these. Try one of these. I want you to, let's say that. I, don't think it's, I know, no, I like that. I don't think you're supposed to use it in context of a line. I don't know how to slope it. Very right. Right. Well, I mean, like, you know, the slope of that. Yeah. It's just getting smaller. Okay, try that, please. Please. What, what was the okay. UV prime thing for? It well, that just, thing. so that's like U, that's like V. Right? But I mean, what was that the that's prime for up there on that? Oh, that was just another way. That's just kind of a split way of showing prime. prime? That, if, if I put the prime after this whole thing, it means that product, the, the derivative of that product. Equals? Same stuff. No, why'd you put the equal sign to nothing? Well, because that, that just means my same stuff as above. Oh, I get it. Is it just two extra Okay, so what about this? So what would we get? X squared times sine x prime. Okay, yeah, but what is sine? What is the derivative of sine x? Cosine x. Oh yeah, you can actually sign Plus. Times what's the derivative of x squared? One. Right. So the reds are the derivatives. Okay. First times the derivative of the second plus <coughs> vice versa. And then if we wanted to simplify this, which you know we, we, we probably want to do, we could, we always want to write these terms with, this might seem minor, but this is important. We always want to write the trig functions last. Because if I were to, I mean that's just confusing to read it. I don't need the parentheses if I put the 2x first. So that looks like x squared cosine x plus 2x sine x. See how much better that is? Yeah. Don't need parentheses. If I didn't have them otherwise, you wonder, is that the sine of x or the sine of x? You, know, you don't know. So you always trail with the trig functions. Trail with trig. Okay? Why did you put equals here? It's the same thing. Well, because that's how we show algebra, right? That's We just said we equal, equal <coughs> this, but I it's not quite the same. I'm going to put that 2x out front to put it, make it fully simplified. If I wanted to, I could factor an x out, but I don't need to. That doesn't really help benefit us. Okay, quotient rule. Quotient, in fact, I'm going to start the quotient rule. I mean, I, I guess I'll show you. That was the product rule. That's the product rule. The product rule is very simple to do. Quotient rule is a little trickier. We like to avoid the quotient rule when possible. So the derivative with respect to x. Yeah, why do we have it then if we don't want to use it? Well, because sometimes it's the best way to do it. But we'll look at some examples where it's not. That's what that's kind of where I want to end up today. So the derivative of the quotient of f of x and g of x is get this, this is a little strange. It's g of x times f prime of x, and this is big. Minus <laughs> Holy crap, man. Divided by g prime of x squared. Yep. Oops. But not by g prime. G of x. It's just g of x. No, I can't leave red. That just offends my sensibilities. Why black? And that measures the g of x. Okay. Now I'm confused. So that's, that's the quotient rule. It's much easier to see. Let's trade these g's and f, g's of x and f of x's and all those for using these. It's much easier to see. So instead, let's write it this way. 
Remember what prime means. Here's how you can remember this. Prime means the derivative, right? So what this really is, this is v times du dx minus u times dv dx. Same thing as v prime over v squared. Now, why isn't the square and the minus sign the same color? <laughs> uh, because that minus sign is so important not to forget that I, because it's, see, now look, this is different. No, it really is a big deal. If we go back to the product rule, Plus. Well, product rule is really simple because that's a plus sign. It makes no difference if we transpose those or commute those terms, right? Because addition is commutative. But product rule, you got to be careful. Product rule, that's not the case. Because subtraction is not commutative. If I get the wrong term first, I'm off by a minus sign, right? So you got to put this term first. And here's how you remember it. V u prime is the same thing as saying v du dx. So that sounds like video. So if you're saying the word video, you know you're doing it right. If you're saying u dv, that doesn't sound like anything. But if you start off by saying dd, that's how I always remember it. And you might not like that, but that's how I would remember it. So v du dx minus the other combination divided by v squared. Yes. Yes. All right? So, so let's look at one of these, first of all, where we need the quotient rule, and then just to get a practice, and then we'll look at one where we can avoid it. So how about this? What if we have? The derivative with respect to x of Is that a D on the yeah. sine x over x squared. Okay. So what does the rule tell us? V to u dx. Okay, so, so the bottom goes first, right? Bottom times derivative at the top. So v times the derivative of sine x, which is? Is the derivative of sine x no, we'll get we'll get to those. Yeah, we're about to go there. Minus <coughs> sine x times two x. And Eva was doing something good there. She was she was putting the derivative out front, the two x out front, which is what you should do, rather than have to save that for another step. If you see that the derivative of x squared is going to be a two x, why not just put that out in front of the sine x divided by? X to the fourth. X squared squared which should be x to the fourth. Right. Right. So if we wanted to write that out a little better, we could write that out as x squared <coughs> cosine x minus two x sine x over x to the fourth. Right? Okay, make sense? Sure that's just three. Is that the whole? That's what it be. That's it. That's your answer. Yeah. Okay. Now, are, is there anything we could do to simplify this a tiny bit further? Hey, look at oh, the factor. We can factor out an x and cancel that with an x on the bottom, right? Everybody see that? So if I took an x out of here and an x out of there, I'd have x over x to the fourth, which is one over x cubed, right? So I could. Could do this. Whoa, but but you got to be. Why can't you take out two? Because I only have one to give right now. But you have to be very careful with that. Because when you start doing that, you're eliminating possible zeros. And so we'll, as we, as we do this stuff with applications, we'll talk about when you can and when you can't do that. You know, when so it makes sense and when it doesn't. Can we put it in like that? Right. No, it's, it's OK. I mean, it, al they're, algebraically, they're equivalent. But it's possible that there's a hole we just filled in, right? So we didn't want to do that. Well, it depends. <laughs> I mean, it's, this, is, this is the actual answer. And, and you're safe just leaving it like that. We don't know yet. So just, leave it, just leave it the way you get it. Yeah. So, Better safety solve. Okay. So don't have X go to one. I, I, oh, sorry. 
Well, I, you know, I, yes. I don't want to say it. That'll make a lot more sense in a couple days. When we, when we Hopefully. Start. Well, yeah, no, actually, look, a couple, couple days, days, I won't well, have to yeah, A couple of school days. Okay. Yeah, because I'll be, when I come back from Monday, yeah. So, so what, what about this now? This is, that's our answer, but what, what if we got another one? Uh, we'd rather avoid that if we could. In fact, we could have here. There, there's a way that we could have, instead of using the quotient rule, let's look at the same exact problem, but let's do it in a slightly different way. Okay, let's grab this <laughs> Okay, how could we rewrite that, the function or the, the argument of the derivative, the, the function that we're differentiating, is there a way we could write that to look like a product instead of a quotient? 2x sine x. No. Sine x over x squared Having x squared on the bottom right, is the same as what? X to the negative two. X to the, multiplying by x to the negative two. So I could, if I wanted to, I could write this as. That matter. I mean, probably x to the negative two would be better to get it. But it's the product. Of it. So now we can just use the product rule. See the advantage? That's what I said. Product rule is easier. Two x. So that's the first times the derivative of the second. Well, what's that going to look like? What's the derivative of x to the minus 2? Negative 2x to the negative 3, right? Plus x to the negative 2 times the derivative of the first. That's a much easier derivative, granted, but to put that in, to get a common denominator, so you're essentially doing the work after the derivative instead of before the derivative, right? And you, does that make sense here? We did a simple derivative, but now we've got to do some simplification of the answer. So how would we maybe simplify this? Okay, yeah, the negative exponents I could write as positive exponents. So that looks like... Uh, negative 2 sine x over x cubed plus cosine x over x squared. And what's the last step I would need if I wanted a common denominator? Yeah, i got to multiply by x over x because I need an x cubed. That doesn't do anything. So I could multiply this, I could make it look like that. Wouldn't you be missing a zero if you did that? Though? Yeah, well, that yeah. doesn't change anything. Oh, it does? Yeah, see, we, so we don't want to do that. Well, no, it's... I'm it's, not doing it. It's, it's okay, but now look at the answer we got. That's algebraically equivalent to the one we got over here. Yeah, but think of the whole Oh, here, I got that. Right. <laughs> I, I feel like I made too much of a de big deal about that. I, I, I really did. pushed the panic button on something. I didn't mean to push the panic button. You push it. <laughs> let, me, let me just do this. There's a... I'll show you an isolated example of where that can be an issue, so like way in the future. Yeah, I, I, I shouldn't have. So like, like literally, <laughs> let me retract we that. Can do that if we want. It doesn't matter. You've been we'll getting yes. Now. Do it. yes, and you much later on, we might look at an example where where that would have been a problem, but we would also know to anticipate it at that time. So, yeah. So I, I apologize. I should have. I, that was reactionary on my part. Sorry. But do we see we get the same answer then? There's our answer. And, oops, same thing, right? <coughs> I, yeah. I had, you know, this term first, but big deal. Okay. All right, so now, now we want to we want to move on, and we've only got two trig derivatives. We want the rest. Yeah, so let's try this. What if we have the derivative with respect to x of tangent x. What are we going to do? I could write it as 1 over secant, but that doesn't help us because we don't know the derivative of secant yet. Can I write that though in terms of things that I do know how to deal yeah, with? Sine over ah, sine over cosine, sure. 
So if I write that as the derivative with respect to x of sine x over cosine x, now that's a quotient, but we know how to deal with quotients. So what's that going to look like? Uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Going to get bottom, right? That's v and that's u. So I got v. Bottom times the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of sine x? Cosine x. <clears throat> Minus top times the derivative of the bottom. Now, what's the derivative of sine x? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All divided by. Because of you. Uh, denominator squared. Denominator squared. Right? Okay, now, can we do anything with that? That looks kind of ugly, but can it, could it get better? Can we cancel the cosines? Ah, well, can't cancel because, oh. I can't cancel because I can only cancel like factors. That's a term from the top, but it's not being multiplied by this, so I could can't. Could you combine the cosines and the sines? Well, okay, I could say this, couldn't I? I could say cosine times cosine is cosine squared x. Minus a negative is plus sine times sine sine squared x. Well, I could split it. I could split it into 1 plus tangent squared if I wanted to, but I could do a lot better. What's cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x? 1. 1, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I have that trig identity up there. So I've got 1 over cosine squared x, which is the same thing as, wouldn't you agree, that's the same thing as the quantity 1 over cosine x squared? Well, what's 1 over cosine x? Sine. Secant. Secant squared. So it's secant squared. Yeah. So we got, that's, we got a new standard form. So the derivative with respect to x of tangent x is secant squared x. <coughs> How do we get to 1 over cosine squared x? Uh, because this stuff right here is 1. That's our Pythagorean identity for trig functions. Okay. That's just amazing. That is good. Now, we get another one here, too, that I'm just going to show you. And we'll come back and do this one later if we run out of time. But we've also got this. The derivative with respect to x of secant x is secant x tangent x. Now, those if you know those two, you get two freebies. These are the, these are the derivatives of the regular, the non-co-functions. The derivative of regular tangent x is regular secant squared x. The derivative of regular secant x is regular secant x times regular tangent x. Now, watch what happens if we do the derivatives of the co-analogs. So if we do the derivative with respect to x of cotangent x, it's equal to what do you suppose? Uh, it's equal to cosecant squared times negative 1. You get a negative sign introduced, and then you get... Okay. Right. So if you know that, you know that the cos follow the exact same pattern with a negative sign. Okay. Putting green boxes. So the derivative with respect to x of cosecant x equals what? Negative. What? But the co-versions, cosecant x, cotangent x. So how about that? we got a bunch of forms now. We've got product rule, quotient rule, power rule, and, and the derivatives of all six trig functions. I, I am going to want you to memorize these. This, you got, these are working rules that you need to have at your fingertips, mentally. you got to be ready, you got to be ready to roll with all these. Because you don't, what you don't want to do in calculus, you, you don't want to be, you don't have to pause and break your train of thought to think about what these simple derivatives are. It just needs to be like multiplication facts. It just needs to be just immediate. You know what we're going to do next? Sometimes sine is 81. Right. <laughs> what we're going to do next, 
we're going to go to, we're going to look at, at the chain rule, which is where we start taking derivatives of functions of functions, compositions of functions. And then that gets a little convoluted, and so you need to know these things really, really well to, to make that an easier process. Okay? All right. Let's try, well, that's probably about good. <laughs>